What's up guys? In this video, we'll be adding new functionality to our deep learning web application to increase its speed and performance. Specifically, we'll see how we can do this by switching models. So let's get to it. We currently have a web app that allows users to select and submit an image and subsequently receive a prediction for the given image. Up to this point, we've been using VGG16 as our model. VGG16 gets the job done when it comes to giving accurate predictions on the submitted images. However, as we've previously discussed, a model of its size, over 500 megabytes, is not ideal for running in the browser. Because of this, we've seen a decent time delay in both loading the model as well as obtaining predictions from the model. Well, we're in luck because we'll now make use of a much smaller model, MobileNet, which is pretty ideal size-wise for running in the browser, coming in at around 16 megabytes. With MobileNet, we'll see a vast decrease in time for both loading the model and obtaining predictions. Let's go ahead and get into the code to see what modifications we need to make. All right, we're here in our predict with TFJS HTML file, and we're going to make a model selector where the user has the ability to choose which model to use. For now, we'll have VGG16 and MobileNet as available options. Currently, the call to load the model occurs immediately when the web page is requested. But now we'll change that functionality so that the model will be loaded once a user selects which model they'd like to use. Our model selector will take on the form of an HTML select element. So the first thing we need to do is add this element to our HTML. Within the same row as the image selector and the predict button, we're adding this new select element within a column to the left of both of the previously mentioned elements. When a user shows up to the page, the model selector will be set to the option that states select model and they'll have the option to choose either MobileNet or VGG16. Now also recall how we mentioned that until now, the model was being loaded immediately when a user arrived at the page, and during that time, the progress bar would show to indicate the loading. Since we'll be changing the functionality so that the model isn't loaded until a user chooses which model they want to use, we won't need the progress bar to show until that model is selected. So navigating to the progress bar element, we're going to set the display style attribute to none, which will hide the progress bar until we explicitly instruct it to be shown in the JavaScript code. All right, that's it for the changes to our HTML. Jumping to predict.js, we'll now specify what should happen once a user selects a model. When a model is selected, this will trigger a change event on the model selector. We're handling this event by calling a new function, which we'll discuss in a moment, called loadModel. Load model essentially does what it sounds like it does. We pass this function the value from model selector, which is either going to be MobileNet or VGG16. Do you remember how previously we were loading the model using an immediately invoked function expression or IIFE? Well, now that we don't want to load the model until we explicitly call load model like we just specified, we no longer want this loading to happen within an IIFE. The code for load model is actually super similar to the IIFE we had before, just with some minor adjustments. Load model accepts the name of the model to be loaded. Once called, the progress bar will be shown to indicate the model is loading. We initially set the model to undefined so that in case we're in a situation where we're switching from one model to another, the previous model can be cleared from memory. Afterwards, we set model to the result of calling the TensorFlow.js function tf.loadmodel. Remember, this function accepts the URL to the given model's model.json file. With the way we organized our models on disk in a previous video, the models reside in folders that were given the names of the actual models themselves. For example, the VGG16 files reside within a directory called VGG16, and the MobileNet files reside within a directory called MobileNet. So when we give the URL to the model.json, we use the name of the selected model to point to the correct location for where the corresponding JSON file resides. Once the model is loaded, we then hide the progress bar. All right, now let's navigate to the click event for the predict button. Previously, within this handler function, we would get the selected image, and then we would do all of the pre-processing for VGG16 and get a prediction. Well, now since we have two different models that preprocess images differently, we're putting the preprocessing code into its own function called preprocessImage. So now, once a user clicks the predict button, we get the selected image, we get the model name from the value of the model selector, and then we create a tensor, which is set to the result of our new preprocessImage function. We pass the function both the image and the model name. Let's go check out this function. All right, as just touched on, preprocess image accepts an image and the model name. It then creates a tensor using tf.fromPixels, 
passing the given image to it, resizes this tensor to have height and width dimensions of 224 by 224, and casts the tensor's type to float. All of this should look really familiar because we had this exact same code within the predict button's click event before. This code won't change regardless of whether we're using VGG16 or MobileNet. Now, in case later we want to add another model, and say we only want the base generic preprocessing that we just covered, then in that case we won't pass a model name, and we'll catch that case with this if statement that just returns the tensor with expanded dimensions. If VGG16 is the selected model, then we need to do the remaining preprocessing that we went over together in earlier videos. So we have our mean ImageNet RGB tensor that we defined last time here, and we subtract the mean ImageNet RGB tensor from the original tensor, reverse the RGB values, and expand the dimensions of the tensor. We then return this final tensor as the result of this function. If MobileNet is selected on the other hand, then our preprocessing will be a bit different. Unlike VGG16, the images that MobileNet was originally trained on were preprocessed so that the RGB values were scaled down from a scale of 0 to 255 to a scale of minus 1 to 1. We do this by first creating this scalar value of 127.5, which is exactly one half of 255. We then subtract the scalar from the original tensor and divide that result by the scalar. This will put all the values on a scale of minus one to one. And if you watch the broadcasting video, notice the use of broadcasting that's going on with these operations behind the scenes. Lastly, we again expand the dimensions and then return this resulting tensor. Also, in this last case, if a model name is passed to this function that isn't one of the available ones already here, then we'll throw this exception. All right, we've made all the necessary code changes. Let's now browse to our app and see the results. We've arrived at our application and we now have the new model selector we added in. Clicking on the selector, we can select either MobileNet or VGG16. Let's go ahead and select MobileNet. And you can see that loaded pretty fast. Remember, when we loaded in VGG16 in previous videos, I had to pause and resume the video since it took so long to load, but MobileNet was speedy. All right, cool. Now we'll select an image, click predict, and again, MobileNet was super fast relative to VGG16 in returning a prediction to us. So hopefully this exercise has illustrated the practicality of using mobile nets in situations like these. Let me know in the comments if you were able to see the same vast improvements from implementing this on your side, and I'll see you in the next video.